someone said Herdner, wouldn't it be funny if Kirk had sex eyes for Khan's descendant? And then they said, ha, ha, ha. But you know what would be really, really good? (laughs) I'm looking at the numbers of all the short treks, and the one that is absolutely hated by everyone the most is that piece of garbage where we stick number one and Spock in a turbo lift, and then they sing, and it's a musical, and everybody just hates the fuck out of this thing. What if? Because, you know, it's new trek, and... All of us want to do absolute anything possible other than tell a fucking Star Trek story. Right. Absolutely. What if we get mm-hmm. everyone together and we just do a musical <laughs> and we sing and we come up with a really cheeky, silly plot. So it kind of makes sense. And then all the fucking, um, you know, uh, fucking ship bag extra old baggage fans that unfortunately have come over with the property you know we'll we'll slap some reason about subspace and a fucking glitter worm or something in there and then everybody can enter monologue all their dark um angst and shit and it'll be like dancing and it'll be so great and it would you normally you'd think it's like hey like this is a bottle episode we must be saving a lot of money for big special effects on the next episode but we're gonna have so many exterior views of the ship and this fucking anomaly and this and that that it's actually probably a pretty expensive episode overall would you like to know the most depressing part about subspace rhapsody season two episode nine of strange new worlds here it is This single episode of this single season had a budget that was multiple times more than the entirety of Picard season three. At a minimum, five times as much. Where are you getting these numbers from? So the the pastor is Robert Meyer Burnett who was kind of involved in the Picard season three stuff and was working with Terry Metalis on promoting it and getting people to watch it. And this was his complaint was they did this fucking musical episode. It cost a billion dollars, like a ridiculous amount. And he said it was between five and 10 times more was spent on that single episode than they got for the entirety of shooting, shooting season three of Picard. It just puts a fucking acid taste in your mouth, don't it? Insane. I, wa- I watched this episode and my wife, you know, a week ago when we decided to cover this, I was like, listen, we need to, we need to get through strange new worlds season two. Like I want to, and then insert fights, vacations, losing a remote and everything else that prevented this from happening. But she did say sure. up front, she said, what's, what's up with this musical episode? Um, She's on some discord channels like she's got her old FARC friends that she talks to online. She is not a Trek fan. She does not hang around with Trek people other than when I'm in the room. So for her to have visibility on this episode, right? Mm -hmm. That tells you right there what they're going for. Um, And she had said, listen, when we get around to that one, you can't be mad at me if I'm on my phone the whole time. And I said, you don't even have to fucking watch this thing. Because I want (laughs) to tell you right now, if I did not obligate myself to it, I would not watch that one. And I've ranted before again, this is disrespect because it's people who don't give a shit about the property who are using it as a vehicle to push their fucking nonsense on the screen. Um, I've never watched an episode of Star Trek where I have fast forwarded as much as I did with this thing, especially the Uhura parts. Well, I I think Uhura being, I mean, you have to understand, you haven't even watched all the episodes yet. She's like the, the Mary Sue Yas queen. She the same times shit she was last season. Except worse. They're like, let's double down. Let's do more of it. It was it was an insane choice. And I can I'll I'll, I'll grant a little bit of, of of like leeway here briefly. I love musical theater. I am not nearly as cold on the idea of your one comedy episode a year being a musical themed thing if you can kind of bake it into the plot more. Um v- problem number one. This is like their third comedy episode of the season. Like they basically waste most of the season doing stuff that just spins its wheels and is trying to break tension when you've barely gotten any sort of momentum to begin with. And this is completely unwelcome because this comes right on the heels of the best episode they did all season. 
And I couldn't believe this is what they decided to follow it up with. But okay, let's say in a, in a different universe, this was your mid-season break comedy episode because you that worked for you last time. Let's do a musical. Because why? Uh, the chick that plays with her is Hila Rose Gooding. She's got a, a Grammy. She was on a cast a recording. They got a Grammy for um, uh, some musical she was in. Uh, you've got two other cast members who are either recording artists or have lots of musical theater experience and everybody else you got out of tune for, right? So like for the (laughs) little bit of singing that I did watch, I was like, this is terrible. Am I watching fucking Keisha? What is this? The, the real reasons they did this were, uh, for, uh, the lady who plays Lon, um, Christina Chong. She's a, she's an actual singer. And Celia Rose Gooding, who was on Broadway. So they can sing. And they really wanted to make use of their talents, right? And the opening number and some of the stuff in the beginning, you can see the beginnings of an episode that can work, right? Because it opens, they there's a space anomaly. They're checking it out. Everyone's living their lives. You get a little bit of insight into everyone's personal lives, you know, as as they're checking out this anomaly. And the stupid shit happens where they like beam music into it to try and communicate through it. And it with the worst techno babble ever results in them being in a music, a reality in which the rules of musicals apply. Hold on. I got, I got to cut you off real quick. Okay. The fucking director on this thing who did get a memory alpha entry, despite the fact this is his only foray into star Trek Dermot downs is a child actor. Downs appeared in the films escape to Witch mountain. Freaky Friday, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay, so you've got basically a uh, I'd like to be a a Mouseketeer at some point guy. Well known for his work in the U.S. remake of The Tomorrow People. (laughs) So awful garbage shit sci-fi might actually be this guy's uh, wheelhouse after all. The opening number. Not only is that the best musical number as a fan of musical theater, it's well constructed. You know, you, you did a good thing about layering the chorus, especially towards the end. Like it all kind of works. And what actually like makes the plot work is all of the characters being extremely disturbed about what's going on as they're singing. Like Ortega's figuring out that she c- can only move <laughs> at the same time as Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> like, cause they have to be synchronized or like, uh, you've got Pike who's like looking around, like seeing what's happening, like with increasing horror as everyone continues to break out into song uncontrollably as he's asking for status reports. Like, okay, that's, and that works that little, little bit of an idea of like, okay, now let's go into how this is actually a problem. We're going to find a Star Trek way to solve it. There'll be a little bit of fun along the way. And then like, you know, they end. also like, surprise. 15 minutes into the episode, we haven't shown the fucking credits yet, which I skipped through, caught the tail end and saw that they had hummed the credits like it was uh, it was acapella. Yeah. What was the Voyager podcast with the the people versus Star Trek Voyager? Remember that podcast? Yeah, of course I do. They they did the they hummed the Voyager intro and I was like, man, this is <laughs> like a fucking podcast. <laughs> But I thought that the the humming and the bump, 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 like sounded good. And I was pissed off. I'm like, the the original series had like the lady doing like the say, say, oh, like, yeah, just give me that whole fucking th- I, the intro, the credits, the intro credits were the best part of this episode for me. Hands down. The rest of this was fucking toxic sludge. After they get out of that first act. When you have that just that little bit of like, we're still going to tra- play it straight and that this is not good because that's that's where Trek comedy works. It's when there is a comedic space problem. It's not that there's no space problem. It's that it's a funny one like Bride of Chaotica. There is a space problem like Rascals. There's there's Terrible. a space problem. You know, there there uh even even uh spirit folk there's a space problem but it's funny right it's a funny space problem and everyone has to solve it but it's fucking ridiculous that it has to be solved sometimes they work like when it's bright of chaotica sometimes they don't when it's spirit folk it's fine but the key is that the show 
has to treat seriously the space conundrum, and the show doesn't. The show treats the space conundrum like itself is a joke. And as the episode goes on, it gets worse and worse and worse. And the finale is so bad, I feel like you cringe back through time and space. Like, it's just unbelievably wretched. The Klingon stuff didn't even bother me. <laughs> was you just, were you just numb by them? I was like, this is such a piece of trash episode. And seeing everybody actually trying their hardest to like put on like a compelling musical performance is so revolting to me that when they broke the Klingons out and they actually were just like, we're going to make these guys look like trash and complete jokes and like make them jackasses. That was enjoyable humor because the rest of it was just ha ha. It's kind of funny. It's a space. Dumb. No, but really look at us. We're good singers, right? Like uh, you guys, you Star Trek neck beards. You, you do realize that we're actually pretty good singers, right? Like, like I don't, Fuck you. I'm not here for a goddamn musical and I don't care what your music career is. You can go over with the fucking sing, though. I mean, she she fucking murdered her solo. I don't give a shit. Okay, what's her face? Fucking Doge or dog or Dogecoin, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Issa Bromley. She was on Broadway. Yeah. Yeah. You have blue eyes or whatever the fuck she was singing. I don't care. I'm not here for singing, man. I don't I don't give a fuck. And especially when the two episodes I'm watching back to back are the time travel tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And then this one. And I see like, hey, you can actually be a really compelling character and something that I care about and have good chemistry with people. Take this fucking music off Broadway crap and shove it up your ass. Like, did you see watch the non musical scenes of her and Kirk together? I watched all the non musical stuff. And here's the thing about a song, which. Maybe you're too deep in the weeds to realize, but whatever message the song wants to tell you, you can listen to the first two lines and now you know what they're trying to get at because they're just going to repeat those two points. The rest of the fucking song. Um, I had to hit the fast forward button a lot, especially on those Ahura ones where they're really trying to like make me care about someone I don't give two shits about. Yeah. So yeah, like, you know, her and then Carol and, Kirk's son and this and that like I really like the scene where she like confesses to him how like what happened and you know again their chemistry is amazing I respect that was not song either Mm -hmm. like they they had a straight delivery on that and it was uh, her rolling the dice and and taking a chance to explore this vulnerable emotional side of herself but I like the way that he like just kind of like came in real close and said am I anything like the other me (laughs) And just the way he said it and like just all in their faces. It's as I respect that level of ability to like tap yes, into the, best the moment. part of this episode was actually the good episode tomorrow, 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 <laughs> yeah. which they even had to go back to the fucking Airbnb or whatever they're staying at to like flesh out her little musical fantasy in that. I, I want to end with a positive note. Like that scene definitely captured, uh, the awkwardness of like that kind of situation of trying to be vulnerable with someone else in a way that like, I can't totally hate this, right? Like there are other episodes of star Trek. I think I will always hate more than this because that scene was that good. So granted, I also, yeah, like I see these memes and they're like, music has no place in star Trek. And then they show all these other musicals and it's like shit, like virtuoso and other just complete bottom of the barrel <laughs> crap right. episodes. And it's like, if you're trying to say that musical episodes always suck, Congratulations, you have sealed the deal on your point. This is, I'm happy to put this episode right up there with fucking virtuoso. Congratulations. I I want to end on a sour note. Okay. I want to go back to the budget they spent on this. I want to go to the fact my wife had some awareness that this piece of shit was out there in the ether. I want to tie this back to why are these properties going out of their way to be so bad? They put big money on this because they knew that by making a piece of shit flaming bag of dog poop, it was going to get attention on this thing. And infamy, you know, there's no such thing as as bad uh, publicity. Okay, and and by making something that was such bad trek and would get everybody so pissed off, they made a clickbait episode. I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being the most watched episode out of the season. 
because they're looking to bring in people who are not Star Trek fans to watch this garbage. Glee fanatics or whatever the fuck you want to call it to replace the existing viewership that they have. And I don't think it's people who watch Glee. It's that it's being made who people by people who watched Glee. There's a whole theory that the ruining of Hollywood is a consequence of the fact that the new class of mid-level creatives are the type of people who thought Glee was amazing entertainment that I actually do think has a lot of purchase to it. And I don't think that they've made shit on purpose, Peter. I think they don't know that they made shit. They're making products to appeal to people of their sensibilities. Yes. Under this fucking delusion that you can make a stupid musical, which should have had a, a, a bottle episode budget where you have a very limited uh, pool of money that you're working out of. And we're not making new set pieces. We limit the exterior shots. Kirk may as well be part of the main cast at this point, along with um, Pike's girlfriend, Patel or whatever. Yeah. Like you have people standing on their chairs and singing. How does this have more money thrown at it than Picard's season three? So this is a goofy marketing stunt to get eyeballs on Star Trek under the assumption that you're going to get people to stick around. And it's not going to happen. No. You're going to piss off your existing viewer base. And maybe there is some cross section of the, the, the viewership out there that loves musicals and loves Star Trek and recently (laughs) suffered a traumatic brain injury. And and as a result, this thing comes out looking sterling. Joking aside, if you're able to watch this episode and you really think it nailed it, I'm glad you got a very expensive cookie. And cool. As someone who loves musical theater and Star Trek, this was just not appealing to me on either level. Yeah, but you like good Star Trek, and that's that's going to disqualify you. I also I like good musicals. <laughs> I want to let my sis, my uh, my daughters watch this and see if they can give a single fuck about what's going on here. I mean, they like glitter and and singing, so maybe that might appeal to them. But this all looks it reeks of a a bad marketing stunt to piss off people, to generate clicks, to get people to start watching. Um, song clips on YouTube and think that somehow that's going to translate into a that I'm going to pitch to my boss that, hey, if we do this musical, people are going to watch us on YouTube and somehow uh, a magic genie is going to rise out of this pile of shit and uh, grant you the wish of adding, you know, 600,000. What's it being called at this point? Paramount Plus. Yeah. Paramount Plus subscribers. Yeah. I no oh, and by the way, stuff. you know, our entire cast who desperately wants to not be doing Star Trek and would rather be on Broadway, they're really going to love this episode where they get to sing and, and dance and not be Star Trek people. Well, we're Star Trek people. Thanks for watching. <laughs>